Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 29th of September. So we'll go straight in with apologies for absence. We've received apologies this evening from Marie Bailey, who is not well, uh, from Alex Farrell, who is away on leave, and from uh, Councillor Tina Clements, whose husband has been taken ill, so we'd like to send him our best wishes. Uh, everyone else is present. Uh, declarations of interest, does anybody have any pecuniary or prejudicial interest they need to declare? No, excellent. Uh, item three on the agenda is question time. I've not been made aware of any questions for this evening. Uh, so moving on to item four, matters referred to cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals. I'm not aware of any recommendations uh, that are being presented this evening. Uh, no, Chair, I've not received any notification of any, um, uh, any recommendations coming from scrutiny committee since last meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. Uh, that said, the next item on the agenda has been through scrutiny, so scrutiny has uh, has had an opportunity to, to feed into, into the next one. So without further ado, we'll move on to agenda item five, which is the quarterly update on the future High Street Fund. The recommendation is that cabinet members endorse the report. Uh, a number of cabinet members sit on the programme board, uh, so we'll be involved in this to a, a greater extent than the others. Um, the report details uh, the updates on different elements of the project. Uh, we'll start off with College Quarter. The South Staffordshire College have submitted their planning application for their new development, which will replace the department store end of the co-op, uh, or the old co-op building. Um, and an update on that, a uh, tender has gone out and been awarded for the demolition company to take down the 1960s part of the co-op retail store and to strip out the interior of the Victorian element of the co-op uh, co shop, um, and that will become the new enterprise centre. So work has uh, has commenced on that, and we should, be, we should be seeing some big changes in the town centre over the next couple of weeks. So hoarding will be going up, and that large building uh, that fronts onto St Editha Square will be coming down. Um, so this is going to take uh, quite a bit of time, but there's going to be some significant... Uh, uh, some significant adaptations and changes that will be happening over the next uh, next couple of weeks. Brings me on to middle entry. Uh, peer group uh, have now uh, signed, signed the deal and uh, we, we are now owners of the bottom end, the southern end of the old middle entry uh, block, which is the area that isn't covered from uh, what was Christopher's uh, around the corner. Uh, However, the Pound Bakery are still occupying one of those units, so we have become their landlord uh, until their lease expires. This has allowed us to start uh, internal surveys of the building, uh, as well as working with peer group to gain access to the internal parts of middle entry to look at the bridge structures, uh, so we can start to build up uh, a detailed plan of how we're going to uh, demolish those and how we're going to uh, demolish and rebuild the uh, retail units at the southern end, which will become the flex space. Uh, at the back of the town hall. The Castle Gateway planning permission uh, has been given uh, and approved uh, for the demolition of the extension at the rear of the Peel Cafe. Uh, so work has now started on that uh, and the council have been working with and the, uh, and the consultants have been working with Nationwide uh, to look at the internal fit out of the Peel Cafe, allowing Nationwide to move across the road. Uh, and members will also be aware that uh, Julian Flores vacated their property uh, on the end next to uh, the Nationwide and have moved further down the street, taking on another Borough Council property and bringing that back into use and done some extensive work uh, on that one. So we, we're beginning to see things happen now uh, with the project. Um, a lot of work has gone in in the background in terms of acquisition and planning and design and, uh, and project building, but we're now actually seeing some, some physical differences will be, will be happening in the town centre over the next couple of weeks. Um, so really that's all I've got to, to raise at the moment on that report. So happy to take any questions or listen to any comments. Councillor Dorr. I'd just like to say as part of my portfolio, I look to be heavily involved in what's going on. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for the town and the residents and I'd also like to second that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dorr. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll build it and it's in your portfolio to make it work. Um, anybody else, any comments? 
The car I've proposed that, Councillor Doyle has seconded. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Brings me on to item six of the agenda, which is the agreement of the terms of reference for the Staffordshire Leaders Board. Members will be aware that back in February, uh, we, uh, we agreed to join in with the Staffordshire Leaders Board uh, and, and formulate that partnership as a, as a way of driving forward and improving the, the county area that we are in. So what this report does is seeks further endorsement of the updated terms of reference which the board has been working on uh, and have agreed at board level, but in, in our governance structure we've said each individual authority's executive needs to have eyes on these uh, and agree them uh, before we before we fully adopt them. Uh, so if we look at the bottom of, I've got it on page nine of my papers, uh, there are a number of, um, of, of elements there that we are asked to consider uh, and to endorse in terms of the powers of the Staffordshire uh, Leaders Board. So very briefly to go through them, uh, to lead and oversee development of county devolution deal with Her Majesty's Government, His Majesty's Government, sorry. Uh, to lead and oversee the alignment of relevant local authority action on climate change, waste and sustainability. And if anyone was listening to my uh, contribution to infrastructure safety and growth the other night, you'll see I have a particular view on how waste fits into the climate change agenda. Uh, to lead on the alignment uh, of relevant authority plans for enterprise and government funding and investment streams. Uh, so this is to take full advantage of the new uh, different, uh, uh, different funding streams that are coming from government. Um, to lead and oversee the uh, interaction with the health sector in Staffordshire. Uh, to oversee the alignment of relevant local authority plans for future infrastructure. Uh, and this is also connected to levelling up funding that's been coming down the line uh, and how we can engage to make sure that we get the, the most out of that as the different tiers are eligible for different areas and different elements. Um, also, look at how we can collectively deal with housing and homelessness. Uh, and this sets outside the fact that uh, we have our own housing stock in Tamworth other authorities don't, but we're still responsible for uh, strategic housing and responsible for, for homelessness. So how can we collectively tackle that rather than see people wandering around the country, uh, the county getting passed from, from authority to authority? Uh, to initiate and lead um, the Staffordshire-wide joint initiatives that enhance local government. So this is about partnership working uh, with our peers throughout the county. Uh, to act as a local public sector decision-making body for strategic economic growth. Uh, and we'll all be aware of the government's announcement last week uh, in terms of an investment zone. Uh, so we all need to be at the table and steer uh, and work towards what we can do for, uh, for all of our benefits across the, uh, across the county. Um, as a conduit as well to sub-regional and regional bodies, uh, such as LEPS or whatever their future is, uh, and particularly uh, Midlands Engine, which has always been targeted at upper tier authorities. So this is about getting our voice heard on a wider stage. Uh, where appropriate, agree shared priorities uh, for bids and funding uh, in terms of uh, local growth fund and shared prosperity. Uh, and as you know, Shared Prosperity Fund deals heavily with skills uh, in the first tranche. Uh, and not everybody can be accommodated in terms of employment in one single district. So it's how do we improve the skills across the across the whole of the county whilst targeting individual districts with their uh, with, the, with the needs that they have. Uh, to monitor and evaluate projects and programmes and activities commissioned directly by the committee uh, or the board. Uh, so that will be particular projects that we pick up as a, as a leaders board going forward. To communicate and where unanimously agreed to align activities across Staffordshire on a range of other key public priorities that affect our citizens. So this is about lobbying and about having a single voice for all the districts and the county council together. And the final one, to prioritise uh, prioritise and make decisions on the use of funding that that leaders board may have some influence or control over. So that's also about that, that, shared, uh, that, that shared work and, that, uh, and the partnership opportunities. So they're the key things that we're asked to consider this evening. Uh, and we're asked to endorse the updates uh, made to the terms of reference uh, so I can feed those back at the next leaders board. Move, happy to take any questions or comments. Councillor Pritchard seconded.
Ja, ja bra. Kanske då. Just uh, another comment that, again, this is another one that's going to heavily involve um, myself and I look forward to the work that it brings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. So it's been proposed and seconded by myself and Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Item 7 is the exclusion of press and public in accordance with the provisions of the Local Authorities Regulations 2012 and Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the Schedule 12A of the Act, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I so move to have a seconder. Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. So can we have the press and public... Uh, excluded from the meeting and can we turn off the webcams please.